Hello, so this is a guide on how to produce an eye-catching poster using Microsoft PowerPoint 2010. Now if you notice I will be following this guide uh, which is actually for 2007. Now there are very few differences between 2010 and 2007 but where there are any differences I will be showing you during the course of this video. So you might be wondering where you get this guide from. So if you go onto the dissertation Moodle page, you'll notice that there's a part called poster presentation information and you'll find a step-by-step -step guide on how to design a poster at the top, just above these videos. The first thing you'll want to be able to do is produce a blank canvas which will be the same size as your A0 piece of paper. To do this, uh, you first need to open up Microsoft PowerPoint 2010, which you do by going to the Start menu, Microsoft Office, Microsoft PowerPoint 2010. I'm waiting for it to load. When it loads, you'll be greeted with a screen that looks like this. I will now put the two um, pages side by side so you can, you can see the step by step guide. If you look here, the first thing you want to do is go and create the, the paper size that you require for an A0 piece of paper. To do that, you go design, page setup, and if we look here, you will find that you need a width of 84 centimeters and a height of 118. You will also notice that you have the option of having it portrait or landscape. Now this choice is entirely up to you. Once you've made that decision, just click OK. Okay, so we've now got a canvas which is the same size as our A0 poster, but we need it to also be blank. To do that, we go home, new slide, and choose blank. And that's how you produce your blank canvas. The next thing you might want to do is adding a background to your poster. In order to do this, simply go Design, Background Styles. You can choose one of these backgrounds here. What we recommend, however, is clicking Format Background, which gives you more options. You have the options of picking up a solid fill here, and then choosing something that looks a bit like that. Or you can do a graded fill. These often look nice. So you can have it going from light to dark with different colours. The other thing you may want to do is use a pictured or textured fill, which would allow you to add a picture uh, to the background. If you click on this option, simply then click File. Let's see if we can. Uh, choose a picture which would look nice. Try and avoid having very complicated backgrounds as it will often make text hard to read and also distract the reader. For this reason I'm going to uh, choose a background style of a graded fill. And what looks nice? I reckon that looks quite nice. And click close. We've now got a background style, and that's how you do a background. The next thing you'll want to do is add a poster title. To do that in PowerPoint, we have a number of recommendations. First of all, your poster title should be simple so as not to distract the reader, but at the same time, eye catching and viewable from 15 feet away. 
the way we recommend to do it in PowerPoint is to use WordArt. To get to WordArt, simply go Insert, WordArt, which is like the big letter blue A, click on the down arrow and choose a style that you approve of. I'm personally going to go for this big bold letter A. If you notice now, the writing has come up very small and won't be visible um, when typing in. In order to get around this problem, we recommend you zoom in. You can zoom in using the control down here. You ideally want, if you want to know what the poster will look like when it's on the wall, simply zoom in to 100%. As you notice, the text has now got a lot bigger. Mind you, that's the joy of zooming in. Now I have decided that I am going to do my poster on whether animals can be used to treat depression. Not in terms of eating them, but in terms of petting them. So I'm going to call my poster Can Animals Be Used to Treat Depression? I wish I am sure you will have a much better title for your poster, but this is only for a demonstration. If you notice, I can now move the word art to where I want it to be on the page. If I want to see the whole page again, I simply click on this button here, making it very easy to navigate and not get lost on the page. So I've moved it up. I'll zoom in a bit and if I highlight it I might decide that I don't like the colour or I might decide that I want to change the font. To do that I highlight it, I right click and I choose a colour. So I think I'm going to go for it's a nice colour here, it's a nice colour and I'll also look at maybe make it italic but keep it as simple as possible, so not to confuse the reader. I can also change the size here and the font there. So, for that. that looks quite nice, I think. And that is how you produce a poster title in PowerPoint. The next thing you may consider doing is adding the bulk of the text to your poster. To do this we recommend you use the text box function which can be found under insert text box. Simply drag and drop like this to produce a text box you can type in. If you notice it is currently on 84 which is far too big. If we go down to size 12 and zoom in to 100% to see what it will look like on the wall. We'll be able to see how big a size you'll need. We recommend at least 16 though, as it's easier on the eye. Next, you might want to consider copying some text that you've already produced from a Word document. To do this, go to the Word document, highlight it, right click and click copy. This is slightly different to the 2007 as told in the guide. The next thing you want to do is go back to the PowerPoint slide, right click and this is yet another difference but it does make it much easier to work with. If you see now you've right clicked and it's come up with a context menu telling you the different styles you can have. Now if you want to use the destination theme, which means that um, it will automatically adapt itself to the style of the PowerPoint, you click on the, the far left option. If you want to keep source formatting, you want the second to the left option. If you want to paste it as a picture, being that it will become hard to manipulate, then you want the third from the left option and if you just want to keep the text only 
then you want the, the very far right option. In this case, you probably want to use destination theme, but you're, you're still going to want to change it. So, once you've pasted it in, highlight the text and right click. You now have the option of choosing a different size of font, choosing a different font, making it bold and italic on this option here. I think I quite like italic. Uh, and if you move to this option here, you can see what the line spacing is. We recommend using a line spacing of 2.0. That means that it's double line space, making it much easier to read. Once you've added the text you need, and you like what it looks like, click here to zoom back to the whole of the poster which will make it easier to work with other text boxes. Don't forget that if you want to see what the text looks like again on the wall, just simply zoom in down here to 100%. And that's how you add text to your poster. The next thing you might want to do is add graphics to make your poster look more eye-catching or to help illustrate a point. There are two ways of doing this. You can either scan an image and then edit the image. So I've scanned an image using the uh, printers at the university. If you want help and guidance doing that, I'm, I'm more than happy to show you. I can then paste that in here using the picture U button, which works very similar to how you would text. I can then edit it to make it look nice, maybe add a frame round, maybe add some artistic effects. These are all new features um, to 2010. The other alternative is to insert it using clip art. So to do that you go insert and then clip art and if we search for cat. Let's see if we can find another cute picture of a cat. Now what you notice is I can drag and move it around just by using that. And I can resize using the handles here. Now let's say I wanted to use a new feature to 2010, which is called Remove Background. Now, this feature can be very useful, but it can also be very time consuming to get right. So, it's very much up to you whether you use it or not. But it can, in certain cases, produce very good effects. Because it can allow you to remove a subject easily. So what I'm doing now is I've marked areas to keep, and I'm just drawing on the photo or the picture where I want to keep an area and I now have the option of drawing on an area I want to get rid of. It's worth pointing out that anything in purple will disappear when you click off. So you also have the option of using the crop feature as well, which is under there. So we can literally just bring it up there. I have something which looks quite nice. Okay, so that is how you use graphics and the look like graphics in PowerPoint. The next thing you might want to do is insert a graph. Now graphs are great for illustrating information. And there are two ways you can do this. The first is to produce your graph in PowerPoint. To do that we go insert, chart, column, 
and then you notice that Excel loads up at the same time. You have the option of changing the chart map type to whatever suits you. You've got wide range from line graph to pie to bar to column. So it's entirely up to you. You can also move the chart around like normal. And if you want to edit the data on there, all you do is type or change the text. So preschool. Score. and then if you move the blue line here then it will cut down how many columns you have yeah to just two similarly if you move it up that will cut down how many rows you have and if you change the figures it changes the graphs. So that's one way of producing a graph. The other way is to import it from another program such as SPSS. Now a word of warning that unless you're very careful, so if I just quickly produce a, a graph like so, so we'll go for a bar chart, simple. Okay. And then hopefully one will come up. Let it load. You'll notice it comes out by default looking like this. Now this is actually pretty horrible. What you want is one that matches your background and the colour. So to do that you just simply uh, double click and then double click again and then go on to borders and film and then choose the colour that matches, click apply click on the background, choose the colour that matches click apply you've got the options of changing the name of the title like you would normally and you've got the options of changing the background So if you do that and then just right click and copy and paste and it works the same as before. So ideally you probably want to use the picture theme here as it's a picture or um, because other techniques will often not work. So that gives you a graph and that is how you produce and work with graphs in PowerPoint. The last thing you'll need to know how to do is to save your PowerPoint or your poster in the correct format. You either need to save it in a .png or a .gif or gif. If you do need to do that just go file, save as, choose Um, PMG or GIF from there, click save. Uh, yes, current slide only. And then, if we go to the desktop, you'll find your poster there. Okay, any problems, please get in touch. My email address is c.hickton. That's c hig2n at newman.ac.uk um, and good luck.